going on, everybody? Fix my hat here. Welcome back to this Mission Fishing Podcast. Hopefully, you're all doing well. Got a good show for you guys today. Wait for a little more people to roll in here, and we'll go ahead and get started. What's going on, guys? Instagram, we're going live on uh, YouTube if you want to join in. Got a good show for you tonight. What's going on, man? Royal Hookups, what's up? Hopefully, you're doing well. We're on the... Uh, we're going to hop on YouTube here pretty soon. Just got the YouTube live going, so... Hop on over. Richie Rich, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Driftwood Fishing 760. What's going on? Oos, glad you could join us. Big Water Outdoors, glad you can make it tonight, man. You didn't sleep in this time, huh? Rocking the uh, pineapple pizza. You know what's up. Switch over from Instagram to YouTube. Oos, heck yeah, man. I think I've uh, been sending some jigs out to your... Uh, some of the guys going on your trip because I, I saw a big Utah order come in today. So I appreciate that, man. Thanks for looking out for us. Captain Dan, who's from Sunny Carlsbad this week. Back home, man. Awesome. That's good to hear. Too much running around. It's good to be home every now and then. Actually, I like being home all the time, but you seem to be out and about every week. Big Water Yak says, now nah, I was getting stuff ready for last week. Benji, Tom Catmarino, what's going on, Benji? Glad you could join us. Jeremy, what's going on, man? Oos, glad you could join us. See, Chavez says, I just got my micro jigs today. Can't wait to bust them out tomorrow. Yeah, man, looking forward to seeing some pictures, dude. Post them up. I think that'll be awesome. Can't wait to see what you get. Georgia Bassin, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Tossing the 20 gram for some sand bass tonight. Always killer. Heck yeah, dude. Hopefully, I'll see some pics. I love seeing the fish you guys catch on those things. If y'all want to join us, we're on YouTube. I'm going to get the show started pretty soon here. If you guys want to hop on YouTube from Instagram, uh, we got the live chat and stuff like that. If you're not a member, uh, just check out Submission Fishing on YouTube. Have a good time. Join the live chat. See what's up to some killers. Big Water Yak says, getting stuff ready for tomorrow right now. Nice, man. Fishing Fridays. That's the way to go. Love those Utah orders. Yeah, man. Thank you. Corey King said his, his order arrived. Thanks. Tossing them on the yak tonight. We can do a little yak yak fishing, huh? Oh, yeah. You did get the kayak, huh? Yeah, man. It's, you're still doing the shore pounding, though. That, that's pretty cool. But I know once you get on that, um, once you get on that kayak, man, it's like life changing. At least for me, it's hard to go shore pounding. I, I've been like forcing myself to go out and hit the shores more. I think it's a little better in Florida, to be honest. Uh, it's no joke in California, but I'm glad you're sticking with it. It's just when you have a kayak, it's just like so much easier to catch fish. It's hard to get on shore unless you like really know where they're at. Some guys are on here. They, they know how to catch them and they get it done. Benji said, I did a night session, Lake Mojave. But had engine issues. Oh, no, man. That's the worst. Down in SD, oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Yeah, man, no, nobody wants to mess with engine issues. What's going on, guys? Hawk Squad, did you really move to Florida because of death threats? <laughs> yeah, we were... Uh, Hawk Squad was coming out here. We were going to fish together. He was made his way to uh oh he's in the the chat here. He was um we were gonna fish, you made his way to Jacksonville and uh he got sick unfortunately, but next time he comes around, we'll have to link up. I actually met him at um Huntington or no, Long Beach, the Long Beach ramp, I think last year we went fishing, man. It's a small world, it's crazy the people you meet. Corey King says loaded up right now, practice before the MMFC, no skunk Saturday. Oh, so the MFCs has an event, huh? Yeah, those are cool. You know, when we first started, or when I first started kayak fishing, like I said, I was like mostly an offshore guy and stuff. Um, and then I got to the kayak like a lot of people during the whole government lockdown thing. Uh, the M I went out with the MMFCers, and they were a big help. I mean, those guys, they really dialed it in to make sure everybody caught fish. Everybody shared zones and secrets. It's <clears throat> It's a good group of guys. That's awesome, man. Have fun. Spotty Bull, what's going on, man? The man himself, the judge. 
We're on YouTube, getting ready to sign off on Instagram, but if you want to come join us, hit us up. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started here. The official start. Welcome. Oh, I lost my. There we go. Welcome, everybody, to the Submission Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Muto. Glad you could join us. Tonight, we got a show talking about mostly leader lines. You know, obviously, I'm going to go over some news stories, some announcements, stuff like that. Uh, we'll answer your questions as usual. Um, but one of the biggest or I guess most frequently asked questions that I get is about leader lines. It's mono or floral. A lot of people ask what pound test we use, um, how long a leader should be. So I'm really going to address some of that. We're going to do a deep dive, kind of talk about what all the different materials are that are used for fishing line leaders, why we use them, when to use them, what knots to use, um, all that stuff. So if you guys have any input, you know, questions, opinions, I'd like to hear that as well. And um, yeah, hopefully you learned something. I'm not, not exactly here to kind of evangelize one or the other. I know people really are into like mono floral. We'll kind of talk about what each one is and then you can kind of decide for yourself, you know, I'll give you like the pros and cons of each and kind of when you should use them, when you shouldn't use them you know, stuff like that. So it should be good. If you guys are ever confused about that, um, this be a good show for you. And I know some of you guys are because I get asked that question a lot on Instagram. That's probably one of the questions I get asked the most, not so much the, should I use a leader, but kind of like how much do I use? What pound, what kind of, you know, material and stuff you're using. Simon said, can I fish the 20 gram at nighttime bluefin jigging? Um, you definitely can. I would, I would, you're definitely gonna have to change the hooks. Um, you know, those hooks aren't really, they might hold up. They're actually pretty good hooks. The 20 grams got pretty beefy hooks, but I would probably put, um, a bigger hook on. I haven't fished them for bluefin, but I know some people like that micro stuff. Uh, I've been fishing amberjack out here and I was using a 20 gram, but I was putting on like a five Oh hook on the end. So I do a, like a solid ring onto the split ring so it's like a much bigger hook on the 20 gram and i was catching fish you kind of want to take the jig out of the equation if you can like tie on to the a solid ring with the hook and then onto the jig because the you know if you catch in a big enough bluefin sometimes the wire in the 20 gram it'll definitely get bit but you don't really want to rely on that they're, they're not designed for big game so to speak but they will work as long as you're taking the precautions to um make sure you land that fish once it's hooked Gary said my order stated it was supposed to be delivered yesterday in California, but it just checked and it's still in PA. I'm telling you, man, that postal service, we've been pretty good. I mean, we sent out, I'd say probably when did we release them last week? Like it's been a week and a half. We probably sent out over a hundred orders and a few, I think have been having issues. Hopefully they'll get it sorted out. I mean, if not, there's not too much I can do. Sometimes though, I can file like, um, I can look at it and I can file, um, like an insurance claim maybe and see if we can get you something out. But sometimes they get hung up and then they just, they're lost in the system and then they send it out. But hopefully they get them out to you quick, man. It's, it's kind of crappy. I mean, once it's, once it's in their hands, it's kind of their deal, but I'll do what I can to make sure. Hey, Oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Big Water Yak says the MMFC guys are cool. Yeah, that's a good group of guys. It's very, um, they're a very casual group. You know, it's not even like, it's a club, but it's not, you don't have to be like a dedicated member, you know, to join and it's not a bunch of rules, you know, just be cool, show up. They let anybody fish with them. You know, they don't have meetings and initiations and these demands to be there. They're basically just like, it's a real casual thing want to join join go help them you know go fish with them it's, it's very non-committal so it's it's really great good stuff then you said we're going to hit 100 degrees here this weekend it's going to be early summer almost this whole time <laughs> good luck man bullhead is no joke big water said just don't promote your own stuff yeah like in the discord that is true like <laughs> roman who runs it he's very like um He's very kind of anal about uh, <laughs> promotion and stuff like that. I mean, he's, he's just trying to control it. You know, Roman's a buddy of mine, so I can't complain too much. He, he lets me promote my stuff, but I give him, I try, you know, anytime they want products and stuff, I try to give them to him as well. But yeah, yeah. Big Water Outdoors has got his group going. There's a lot of groups. Uh, 
California Harbor Fishing's in here. Those guys are great. Um, you know, Salt Strong guys out here in Florida are awesome. MMFCers, even the DFA guys are cool. There's a, there's a lot of really good clubs. It really no beef between any of them for sure. But yeah, check out Big Waters Group. It's like no holds barred. All right, guys, let's get into some news here. So Captain Dan sent me this story. I know a lot of you tournament fishermen are into some of this stuff. but the, So CCA has a star tournament going on. Uh, this isn't one that I sponsor per se, but it is a really cool tournament. So basically, it's not just the California tournament. There is one specifically for California, but there's one for Florida too, I think in Texas. CCA is a nationwide brand, um, and they've got it's not a brand they're a conservation organization that you you know have a membership to and these are the guys fighting for a lot of the fishing rights boundary especially in california getting rid of a you know 30 by 30 trying to fight mpas and make sure our fishery is healthy and that the fish are there and you know doing it on science-based things you know instead of just knee-jerk reactions from environmentalists these are real conservationists but they put on a cool a tournaments and stuff too so the star tournament I mean, it was pretty crazy. You can win a boat. I mean, it was like thousands of dollars of prizes. Uh, I'll put this link in the description for you guys so you can sign up if you want to. You have to be a member, and I think it's $40. But what's cool about this is it's kind of like a running. I didn't look through all the rules and stuff, but from my understanding, it's like a running tournament where they you kind of fish, and then when you post the pictures there's like an app that you you do the stuff in that you're put into raffles and stuff like that so you can fish it and it's from it's all summer long so you fish all sum, summer long you can win weekly and then there's like grand prizes at the end so it's something you can just you kind of do all summer and what's cool is they've got a lot of bass sand bass calico bass spotted bay bass uh, there's stuff for halibut yellowtail you know and there's minimum sizes to be measured uh, so spotted bay bass it says 18 inches. That That's pretty tough. There's not too many 18 inch spotties out there, but Calico sand bass, you know, no problem. But yeah, you guys can win a boat straight up 18 foot Parker, the Yamaha outboard. They've got trips to Alaska, um, you know, guided fly fishing trips. And a lot of these trips are donated, you know, four day trip to Cedros, um, all this stuff. And then there's other, you know, prizes throughout the year. So definitely check that out, guys. There's no reason not to join. Um, especially if you're a member of the CCA, because it's just something you can do. If you're going to fish anyways, there's no reason not to do it. Um, you know, it's just kind of one, it's like a passive thing. And we we do these uh, out here at like the Salt Strong uh, community. That's sort of like the community I've been working with out here mostly. Um, and they do tournaments too. I actually won one last week, won like 50 bucks. Uh, these ones are a lot bigger stakes, but they, they kind of just, they go for a month and you put in your, you, they'll have like a target species and you catch it. And it's not really based on size at all. It's just, you basically catch it, put in the code, you hit the target fish, and then you're just basically put in a raffle is like how it works. And it, it, I think this one kind of works like that too. So there's not pressure to kind of get up and fish for the biggest fish. It's just like, it's kind of a no brainer, just fish and win. I mean, there's no, no real pressure to be yanking in monsters and stuff so definitely check that out um cca florida's obviously got it going on cca california pretty much anywhere has got those um the cca star tournament so if that's something you guys are into definitely check that out for sure um and then there is the bd outdoors tournament coming up that is one that i'm sponsoring um, i believe that's next month so they're doing a spotted bay bass kind of their first annual uh, spotted bay bass tournament so go check that out it should be really cool. And, um, yeah, we're doing like kind of a raffle prize for that at the end, uh, or I'm not sure what they're going to do, you know, with the stuff I sent them, but uh, definitely sponsored those been, a working with the BD outdoors for a couple of years now. Those guys are really cool. So check out their thing. So if you guys love fishing, spotty fishing, I mean, there, there's plenty of stuff to do. Even just a couple of years ago, there was very, very few tournaments out there. Now there's just tournaments left and right. Spotty bowl kind of kicked it off. And then of course, spotty bowl, you know, we do a side pot, uh, largest spotty caught on submission jig uh, every every event so every week you do it whether you're la orange county or uh, the san diego chapter you know we do i think 25 dollar gift card maybe 20 dollars i don't remember um for the longest fish with the submission jig so 
that's another something that you can just kind of fish all summer. Leonard, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. 21 month member. Thank you for joining. You're the man, Leonard. Hopefully you're doing well. Good to see you. Nick SoCal Fishing Squad. Ooh, so what's going on, man? Hey, we've got a uh I'll be talking about leader lines and we've actually I was gonna bring you up in this uh conversation too, because you have a kind of an interesting take on these things. Dax the ginger, sick cat. Thanks, man. Yeah, this is a what the Abachar hat, you know, the guy that uh he does a, he actually did the art for a lot of the like booklets, even for like the California CDFW like regulations and stuff. You'll see a lot of his art. I actually have a halibut painting that he did. He's always at PCS too, but that guy does great work. Ready to paint? Yeah, man. We're trying to get some blanks so you can paint, get it done. Still on my fishing hive from last night. Oh, yeah. You went to the Long Beach break wall, was wide open calicos. Yeah, man. That's awesome. I've only fished that like one time. You guys know I was a San Diego guy, but I went up there with Lane, uh, Lane Killian, and it was good, but we went during the day. Apparently, a place at night is just like, it just lights out calico fishing, which is crazy. Yeah, you found some tanks. I saw those things, man. You and Chet. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Super fun. That's good stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off on um, Instagram here. So if you want to find us on YouTube, come join us later. Yeah, that's awesome, Sammy. See, you could have joined the... Actually, it's not... I don't think the tournament's going on yet. But yeah, something like that, you know, for the CCA Star Tournament, you could enter those pictures. And apparently there's an app, like a Chaos Fishing app, where you go in. And I believe BD Outdoors is using the same thing, where you do all your submissions through this app, and then the app takes care of, like, all the measurements and stuff like that. So pretty cool. All right, let's see what else we got here. And for those of you guys, the Florida crew, if you guys, I know most of you guys are California based, but uh, I know I have some Florida listeners here. If you guys are in Florida, Jacksonville, I'm speaking at the um, Salt Strong meeting. They've got the club meeting next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Mavi. So if you guys are in town, I'm going to be doing a slow pitch seminar, how to fish submission mission jig, especially out here for, um, you know, rockfish and cobia and just all the stuff that we got barracuda all the different species out here and i just give kind of a tutorial on how to get bit with submission jigs so if you guys are in town come say what's up we ran into lane last night that that doesn't surprise me dude that guy is like he lives at the wall man and he fishes a lot that guy's like fishing all the time crazy Lane definitely fishes. That does not surprise me. All right. I think that's it. Oh, last announcement. Uh, submission at Sea Guys. We're running. For those of you guys that don't know, we're, I'm doing a two-day trip out in California this year. I'm going to fly out there. Uh, we're running on the Voyager. We're going to do a two-day trip. Uh, it's Technically, it's kind of like two and a half day. We're going to leave October 24th. I mean, October 20, yeah, October or the 23rd. I think the 23rd, 24th, 25th, we're going to go out. Uh, we're going to probably go to the 60-mile bank. We're going to look for big rockfish um, and then bluefin at night. So if that's something you guys want to do, you want to come fish with me, fish with us, uh, learn to do some jigging or, you know, just fish with a lot of cool guys. Meals are included, um, you know, lots of swag, giveaways, stuff like that. So go to submissionfishing.com and this submission at sea tab you know get your ticket it's in october so we got a little while but um if you want a good spot get on your bunks get on there quick so you basically you're going to choose your bunk and that's how you um buy your ticket so it's first come first serve if you want to choose where you're going to sleep let's see here all right guys let's get into it So, like I was saying before I came on or before I started, one of the biggest questions that I get, bar none, is about like fishing leaders. A lot of people want to know. It's just it's a pretty 
you know, innocent questions, but a lot of people want to ask like how long of a fishing line, how many poundage, you know, stuff like that. And then the question obviously comes up too all the time. It's whether it's mono or fluoro. Um, and a lot of people have questions about leaders. So we're just going to kind of go over it a little bit, talk about it, see what fishing, you know, leaders are when they're necessary, you know, all that good stuff, kind of get into the weeds of, you know, what is monofilament and fluorocarbon, you know, and, and all that good stuff. And first and foremost, we kind of got to go over like what, what a leader is. Cause it's not that evident, especially if you're new to fishing, basically when somebody talks about a leader or a leader line, we're talking about a piece of fishing line that's typically attached to a braided line. You know, back in the day, everything was pretty much monofilament line. That's the nylon, you know, we'll go over that, but it's, it's kind of a vinyl line made of plastic. You've all seen it, right? It's been on reels forever. It's a uh, single line, it's monofilament. And that's, that's what used to just be full on everything. Spinning reels, bait casters, conventionals, although bait casters are, are kind of newer too, but like conventional reels and stuff, everything had mono on it. So whenever you tied on a hook or a jig or a leader or bait, it didn't really matter because your whole spool was filled with the same line that you used. So you would just basically tie a knot to whatever hook or jig um, or whatever it was. It wasn't really a big deal. And then this thing called braid came out and braided line kind of changed the game. Uh, braid is basically, it's a polyethylene, you know, there's like Spectra, Dyneema, different brands <clears throat> kind of came out with their own pr pr proprietary thing, but they're synthetic based as well. Um, you know, in Japan, they call it PE, which is basically a polyethylene, which is the compound. And that's made up of a bunch of little strands that make up a, basically a fishing line. So it's four strands, kind of how it started. Now it's eight strands, 12 strand. I've seen it up to, you know, 16 strands. 12 strand is kind of hard to find in the US. Mostly it's kind of a Japanese thing because they do so much jigging. But out here, even like the Berkeley X9 is kind of big. And then the 8X as well is kind of a popular thing. When you see the 8X, it's just that's how many carriers, how many little lines make up the braid. Well, when braid came out, there's a couple of things with braid. It was it's very thin and it's very strong. So people are able to get a lot more line on their reels now. So that's why people are switching to braid. And they switch to braid too because it can be cast further. It casts further, uh, it sinks fast, it cuts through the water fast. You can get a lot more footage on your line. There's really no reason to have to not have braid on any reel that you have. Um but with the downside of braid, with the exception of Nick SoCal Fishing Squad, is that um, it's it's not clear. You know, it's not see-through. It's not translucent. It's usually solid color, and it doesn't have really any abrasion resistance at all. So what people started doing was tying on leader lines, basically a tip of, or a piece of line. It could, it could be two feet, three feet, six feet, whatever it is, but it was a, a tip of either monofilament or fluorocarbon uh, plastic line that went onto the braid. Now, a couple of reasons is that is it gets you, you know, some visibility because, you know, braids obviously not clear. So you could either throw a mono or fluorocarbon tied onto the braid. And then also you have the abrasion resistance. And I think that's probably the more important thing too is, the problem with braid is that it snaps extremely easy. If you're fishing near pylons, rocks, anything like that, there's almost no abrasion resistance in braid. The tinsel strength is very, very strong. I Meaning if you're pulling on it just straight, uh, it's much stronger than monofilament or uh, fluorocarbon. But if you're rubbing on oysters or rock beds, it's not very good. Or if a fish twists up in it, uh, it's, it's just, it's going to pop off. So that's kind of where the genesis of leaders came in, where it's, you know, relatively, it's been around, you know, a couple of decades now, but it's, it's relatively newer in the fishing world uh, before braids kind of took over and pretty much everything you see, you know, is braid. And also one of the things with braid too, is that there's no stretch to it. That was also a benefit is that it, people that love setting hooks with, um, in bass and stuff like that, or working lures from the bottom. And that is actually one of the benefits that we'll get into of uh, not tying a leader. So I say Nick SoCal Fishing Squad because he's one of the few guys. He, he was on the Spotty Bowl panel that we did, the Spotty Bowl roundtable. And he actually doesn't use a leader at all. He's one of the few people I know that just ties straight braid. 
Uh, I think he fishes at night a lot. Nick, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that probably plays into it a lot. And um, I know a few people that just just go straight braid. So not everybody runs leaders, and I would say 95% of people do, but I do know a handful of people that do really well without leaders. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the genesis of leaders. And there's a couple – terms you'll hear too like you'll hear the term top shot a lot when you're doing like big game fishing uh fishing for tuna and stuff like that a top shot is basically it's the same thing as a leader but it's usually a lot more of it it's like it could be 25 50 or 100 feet and um it's wound up in your line so the bulk of it is spooled up with braid but then you'll hear the guy if you buy a new reel he'll ask you do you want a top shot and or room for a top shot and that's basically for could be up to like a hundred pounds of mono or fluorocarbon. Uh, and that's usually for like tuna fishing. Now it, it's really, it's the same thing. It's just, it's a lot more of it. And I think the reason they do that is because you can, well, one of the benefits is you can put on a hundred feet of top shot. And when you're fishing tuna and stuff, when you, you know, get to your mono or your fluoro, you know how much re- or how much line you have out and how much you have left. Or even when you're dropping a jig, it's actually very beneficial because you can, once you've, seen your mono disappear you know that you're at 100 feet deep it's actually pretty handy or when you're reeling it up you know the fish is 100 feet away uh, but also then you can cut it off throughout the night or throughout you know the um the season and you're not having to retie leaders basically every time so it's really easy to just um have that big top shot and then the traditional leader which we do you know spotty fishing and calico fishing almost every other type of fishing rock fishing is basically a six foot 10 foot to i've seen one foot two foot you know small leaders so that's what we're talking about when we say leader now when we're talking about uh leader materials the two most popular obviously are monofilament and then fluorocarbon and we'll kind of get into the differences and see which ones you guys need uh monofilament fish fishing line uh, it's a single strand fishing line made of a single fiber of plastic material typically nylon uh, unlike multifilament like braid, fishing lines are constructed from uh, multiple strands of fiber. Mon- monofilament is simpler and more straightforward. So it is straightforward. It's basically it's one extruded piece of nylon that comes through the machine. Um, and it's not made of multiple pieces. Uh, monofilament is primarily made of nylon, nylon polymers. Uh, its versatility is obviously its strength and it can come in many colors. And stretch is one of its other things that it has that braid really doesn't have monofilament has a certain degree of stretch uh, which can be advantageous to fishing scenarios uh, or not so advantageous we'll talk about that as well and then abrasion resistance and i think this is really the key uh, thing for monofilament is it really provides good abrasion resistance uh, makes it really suitable for fishing around docks uh, rock stocks other services um, stuff like that and then the other real big key is not strength and then we'll go over fluorocarbon and we'll kind of compare the two. So fluorocarbon is, it's a type of fishing line made of a special polymer called polyvinyl iodine fluoride. So it's, I think it's made of these little pellets that they melt together. Uh, some material known for its excellent transparency and high resistance to abrasion, making it an ideal choice for various fishermen. Some say key attributes of the fishing line. Uh, invisibility. So this is the biggest benefit claim of fluorocarbon is that it's more translucent in the water uh, making it virtually invisible to fish with this low visibility uh, increases the chances of getting more bites regardless of the type of lure sensitivity uh, fluorocarbon is more sensitive to monofilament it's tightly packed uh, molecules it's more dense <clears throat> so it allows it to be um it doesn't have the stretch basically that monofilament does and then it has abrasion resistance obviously better than braid not as good as monofilament and then the sink rate. So monofilament is much more dense. Uh, it's heavier than uh, mono, and it doesn't take out on water, stuff like that. And then there's light stretch. So let's just kind of go through the two. And this is kind of the age-old debate that everybody talks about is the monofilament you know, versus fluorocarbon. Some people are dead set on fluorocarbon. They swear by it. You know, Fluorocarbon is extremely expensive. Monofilament's been around a lot longer. It's not nearly as expensive. And some people only basically run mono and, you know, say you're wasting your money on, um, you know, fluorocarbon. So let's kind of go over some of the things. So 
the density in the materials. Monofilament is it's much more porous, so it takes on water like it actually gets wet and, and it floats. I mean, it does sink, but it, it sinks very slowly. And fluorocarbon is actually it's much more dense by nature. It's just you know this density compared to water is much heavier, so it actually sinks. So when you send out fluorocarbon and monofilament, they have different reactions in the water. Uh, fluorocarbon will sink faster. Uh, than monofilament will, and it doesn't really take on water the way that mono does. Now, both are kind of susceptible to UV lights, which is bad, and that's one benefit to braid. So you got to be careful if you're like leaving it out in the sun and stuff like that. But um, I mean, that's one of the key differences to mono versus uh, fluorocarbon is basically how it reacts in the water. One sinks, like one kind of floats, and that's something you got to really think about. Nick said... Sammy says Floro, hands up, 100%, 100%. Doug Rubin, oos. Richie Rich says, I use 50-foot top shot for fly lining bait. Yeah, dude, that's that's pretty common. SoCal Nick says, lots of night fishing. However, I also fish straight braid during the day. Nice. I use red Power Pro Vermilion due to the fact that fish... I use red power pro vermilion due to the fact that fish have cones and bars in their eyes. Red disappears to fish. That's good stuff, man. Doug Rubin says, check out the new ghost wire fluorocarbon <laughs> at certain depths. It turns blue to them and then therefore blends into the water. Yeah. And that's just going back to the sensitivity. I'm curious, do you fish that because of the sensitivity um, do you just not like having the um, the stretchiness of the two? So, anyways, so let's get back. So we've got the density of the two. The second thing with the density is that is the stretch. Like, so they were talking about uh, monofilament has a lot of stretch to it, and fluorocarbon doesn't stretch nearly as much. It does stretch, um, but it doesn't stretch as much as mono. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing, and it all depends on what type of fishing you're doing. So monofilament will have a stretch to it. It's kind of probably not the best of like you're a bass fisherman, right? Where if you really like setting the hook and pulling on that thing, like you're yanking the pin out of a grenade or trying to pull the plug out of the bottom of the ocean. I don't know if mono's the, the stuff for you because it will have some stretch to it. If you really like filling the line all the way through, you're probably going to want to go braid into a fluorocarbon as fluorocarbon has a lot less stretch. Now, in situations where you're fishing tuna and stuff like that, the stretch I think is actually you know beneficial because um, it actually absorbs some of the shock, especially if you're slow pitch jigging, you know, and you're vertical jigging up and down, and you've got your braid on, you've got a kind of a heavier rod probably, and you're bouncing this jig. And when something bites it, you actually, at least in my estimation you want to have some of that shock absorption because you guys ever like held a line out and you pull it especially with you know a floral to braid let's say and you're, you're just pulling it it's pretty strong but when you put it together and then yank it apart that's when the knots snap on each other um you know when you're doing that snapping motion even though what, if it's taut and you pull it as hard as you can you probably can't break it but once you open it you know and close it and if you don't have that stretch you know it can definitely become an issue so you know, elasticity is a big thing. You know, monofilament, I'd say, is probably your way to go if you're fishing deep, you know, at night and stuff like that. Fluorocarbon definitely has a lot harder. Um, the second thing is, even though fluorocarbon, so also one of the things with a benefit, I think, that some would say to fluorocarbon is fluorocarbon has a smaller diameter as opposed to monofilament. Not as good as braid, but say a 15 pound fluorocarbon is going to be thinner than a 15 pound monofilament. So keep that in mind too. Even though you've got the two, one's 20 pound, 15 pound, uh, the monofilament is going to be larger than the um, actual fluorocarbon will. So there is the diameter thing. So if you're really looking to do some stealth fishing, you know, that, and that's one of the benefits to braid too. You guys know we've talked about this is uh, lateral lines is, in my estimation, the most important thing uh, there is to fishing. I mean, I think you take sight out of the equation and everything else. Uh, fish sense the pressure in the water. They have their sixth sense. Those pits in the side of their body detect everything. Uh, that's why slow pitch jigging is absolutely deadly and works so well. It's the vibration in the 
the filling that it creates in the water is what elicits those reaction bites. So that's where the braid has really been really beneficial because it just it slices through the water. You think you make a cast, you got a hundred feet of line out there. They can feel that line laying down. So if you've got you know fifty pound mono laying on that water, kind of going down, or fifty pound fluoro, it's gonna be a lot heavier than having a really thin braid. Fluorocarbon, uh, much thinner. You know the monofilament. So that's where uh, is is definitely a benefit for sure. between the two let's see pull up my notes here what didn't we cover i know there's lots to go over the um so here's one of the biggest things and this is definitely where monofilament has the key or has the advantage is that monofilament is much 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 more abrasion resistance than uh, fluorocarbon is and when I just talked about diameters, right, you would say, oh, well, if you took a 15 pound fluorocarbon and 15 pound mono, the fluorocarbon is much thinner. So you would think that, well, that's why the monofilament is so much more abrasion resistance. But even if you dropped the weight of the mono to match the diameter of the fluorocarbon, it still has much more um, abrasion resistance than fluorocarbon has. There's nothing that beats monofilament and abrasion resistance. And I think that is the biggest strength to monofilament as opposed to fluorocarbon. Like braid basically is like, doesn't have hardly any abrasion resistance. If you know where you're fishing and you're fishing out in the open and you're making cast, braid might be okay. Fluorocarbon too. I think if you're, you know, you're out there fishing for tuna, uh, pelagics, you know, stuff like that, even some, you know, calicos, it's probably not that big of a deal if you're fishing fluorocarbon because you're not going to run into too much structure. Uh, yellowtail is a different story. So if you're fishing yellowtail, um, where they're taking you down in, into the rocks, uh, rockfish, anything in the in pilings, docks, riprap, spotties, um, I think monofilament is the way to go because of the abrasion resistance. You've got you know, you're fishing spotties around pilings, especially if you're, at least for what I do, and I know a lot of you guys do is the slow pitch jigging, pitching docks, the micro jigging in the bays. It's like you'll lose some fish for sure. And I think the fighting chance that you'll have is is if you're on monofilament. When you're right up next to a piling or in the rocks, uh, you want every advantage you can get. That's where really the monofilament shines. Is it, It's tested over and over again. Brian likes the fish who comes on the show. Uh, he does fishy hour. Uh, he's He did tests, I think, for like two or three weeks, man. He We ran through like every line nothing beat the monofilament when it came to abrasion resistance uh, salt strong guys have done multiple multiple tests on it you can pretty much go on like youtube and watch anybody who does a, a side by side test i think it's pretty much proven the monofilament's abrasion resistance is uh, really where it shines and secondly where mono gets the um knot is in the knots so the knots in monofilament are much better uh, the fluorocarbon. A lot of that is because fluorocarbon's hardness and density, um, it doesn't create knots as well as monofilament. You can really sink down knots on monofilament. You can tighten them up and they get extremely snug. When you test knots on fluorocarbon and monofilament, knots pretty much always hold better on monofilament um, just because of the way that the compound is. It sinks down. It's Again, it's probably sort of that softer... Um, you know, compound that just really lets the knot sink in. So if there was two things where mono wins, it's obviously abrasion resistance and then probably knots. So depending on where you're fishing, you know, this is definitely something you're going to have to want to put into consideration. Corey King says, FC less abrasion resistance than mono. I've always heard the exact opposite. Oh, fluorocarbon. Yeah, it is. Well, that's one of the things it's, a lot of people think that too, especially when fluorocarbon first came out, it was kind of a, you notice when you go to a package, go on a fluoro, go to any fluorocarbon site, no, no, you never see any of them comparing the abrasion resistance and stuff like that to monofilament or boasting how they'll say, oh, it's, it has great abrasion resistance, but it's nowhere near as good as mono. Um, it was kind of a misnomer that I think a lot of people 
kind of bought into like when i first started fishing spotties and stuff like that all i bought was uh fluorocarbon the um was it that cigar stuff the cigar i spent you know for the little tin you know tons of money all i had was fluorocarbon and then once i started educating myself and kind of learning watching like a lot of these people debunk it and seeing it for myself literally seeing it for myself that the monofilament was much more abrasion resistance but it's it's definitely a, a misnomer for sure nothing beats monofilament when it comes to abrasion resistance hands down sammy says they now have fluoro now that beats mono and abrasion resistance and which um which floor is that i'd love to test that out that'd be awesome if it did i mean because that's like that's pretty much everything <laughs> you know for fishing pilings and stuff like that but the sea guard definitely not i know the um the ops and stuff is pretty good i know i told you guys they gave me some of their stuff and i fished it here on the rex and that's all fluorocarbon and that stuff was like swiss i mean string cheese when i was fighting some of these fish but they tore it up dude and it, it's they got into some wrecks i pulled some grouper out of wrecks and uh it held up it actually did held up so i was pretty impressed i know they do like a slow extrusion process where it comes out of the machine stro slower so it comes out more uniform you know or something like that um it's pretty crazy Benji Moreno, his wife made this mug. Thank you very much. Shout out to Benji's wife. The uh, One of the other benefits to monofilament is the cost, obviously. I mean, fluorocarbon is extremely expensive. So if you're a fisherman on the budget, I mean, you can get, you basically, you buy a roll of monofilament, you're never even going to use that thing before it goes bad. And that's the thing too. If you've got something like that just laying around in your box for like years and years, you probably want to get rid of it. There's a shelf life on it um the vinyl ages especially if it's been in sunlight and stuff like that it'll, it'll decay the one good thing about fluorocarbon is you probably you'll probably use it you know because it's in the smaller rolls and you, you'll just naturally use it before it kind of goes bad uh, but it is much more expensive so that is the thing too but even if you threw away two-thirds of your roll of monofilament you still wouldn't even or oh you have the mono you wouldn't even be at the cost of fluorocarbon now um the thing so now the benefit of fluorocarbon is the obviously is the site this is kind of its claim to fame is that it um it's my understanding or the, the way that's marketed is that it doesn't or it diffracts the light differently the monofilament so mono they say is that it the light kind of hits it and makes it glow or makes it, it like shines the light you know when it's underneath the water so fish can see it or monofilament um doesn't refract the light like it absorbs it or it just like it passes through it doesn't basically it doesn't create it doesn't light up the line like the monofilament does so i think that's pretty much the main thing that people go for with um monofilament or that that's really the selling point is the invisibility of it the second benefit we talked about is it's heavier too so if that's something that you're looking for like if you're fishing a ned rig on the bottom uh you know stuff like that it's probably beneficial to have that uh, smaller diameter uh, that sinks so you can just get down to the bottom and tug that line and have the sensitivity so i think, I think for things like ned rigging um, even like casting and retrieving swim baits and stuff like that uh, fluorocarbon I mean, is probably a good bet just for the sensitivity you, you know and stuff like that so those are kind of the pros and cons you know i don't think you go wrong either way i personally you guys know on the show i've been um i'm a mono guy if you guys follow me i've caught in it's bluefin tuna, rockfish, spotties, everything pretty much I, I catch here in Florida. Um, you know, I catch on monofilament. And that primarily is just the fact that I, is the nature of the fishing that I do. Slow pitch jigging, micro jigging, uh, big heavy slow pitch jigging, offshore wrecks. Um, so for what I do personally, you know, slow pitch jigging is, it, it creates, it elicits in a reaction bite. I'm not so concerned with fish seeing the line because it's not a slow finesse system that I'm using. You know what I mean? If you're using like a drop shot or a net rig or a Senko, where you're really trying to slowly tease a fish where they're looking at this thing for a long time um, and they're kind of studying it and the fishing's slow, I can understand wanting the advantage of having a really thin line. But for what I do, um, 
It's a very active style. Like I said, it elicits a reaction bite. I'm not so concerned with them seeing the line, especially if you're fishing deep. I don't think it matters anyways. Fluorocarbon is kind of a waste of money, I think, for like rock fishing and stuff. Um, they can't see that well. Fish have very good eyesight. You know, we've gone over that, but if the water's dirty or it's dark, they, they can't see it anyway. So it doesn't, and the, the sunlight doesn't penetrate down that there. It, I don't think it, it really matters so much. So from my perspective, you know, I've used plenty of fluorocarbon. It's been fine too. I haven't really had issues with it, you know, or failures. But when I was early uh, kind of developing the slow pitch jigging game, it was like, I was losing a lot of fish and I couldn't really figure out why. And I actually started tying on steel leaders and was still catching fish with it uh, in like San Diego Bay because I was, I wasn't sure if they were like eating the jig and their teeth were sawing it off or if the fish were getting tangled in it or I was getting, you know, caught up in the, I think I was like letting them sit too long and I was missing, kind of reeling it up. And I think fish were getting like tied tangled up in pylons and stuff like that. And I, I feel like I, I was losing a lot more fish, but that also was just kind of the inexperience of learning this kind of new style of fishing. You know what I mean? I mean, now I could probably go out there with anything and catch them and pull them off and, and not have a big deal, but you know, there's a place for everything. A lot of people like we had summertime outdoors on, he swears by the, the fluorocarbon when he's doing like tarpon fishing. A lot of people swear by it with like top water and stuff like that, you know, or fly lining baits when shallow, clear water. So, I mean, that's kind of the facts of it, you know, and, and you kind of just choose the the one that you, I, I think each one kind of has an application for its own um, necessity, so to speak. And I just don't know if there's a, uh, a catch all that works for every single thing. Now I know most people, they fish fluoro, they're never going to fish mono. People that fish mono are never going to fish fluoro, but I think you can have both. I have both in my tackle box. Like I said, I've been using the Opsin. I've got the other stuff in there. Uh, I've got all kinds of brands of monofilament. You know, I kind of tie it both on, but um, I think mono works uh, just fine for what I've used. I've even fly line for tuna and outfish people on boats, you know. And then I know we're fishing a fluorocarbon for sure that I just had mono in the middle of the day, you know, a couple of years ago on the Coronado Islands, we were just crushing them, you know, fly lining on, on mono. And then secondly is kind of knots. So the knots you use, there's only so many knots, the FG knot. So if we're going to go fluoro mono to, let's just say we're going to tie our, our plastic line to our braid. This is another question that I get is like the kind of knots that you use. This really all depends, I think, on how much leader you're going to do. I don't. So me personally, I don't send my knot through the guides. A lot of people do. So if you're using a long enough leader or you like to cast your jig really close to the tip of your rod, where basically the the knot goes through your guides and you're constantly casting through your knot through the guide. That's fine. A lot of people do it. I, I don't ever do it. I don't, it's, you know, constant friction on that knot going in and out of the guides. Um, but that is something to think about. So I always, my leaders are usually between like three and four feet. And when I cast, I usually reel my reel up. So the knot is right above the guide, but not inside the guide. So every cast I make, I'm just casting through braid. I don't ever cast through the knot itself. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It doesn't mean you know, you know, it's right or wrong if people like longer leaders, but that is just something that I do that's worked for me really well is not, you know, putting not a, too much on where I'm casting through. And sometimes I accidentally make my leader too long and it's like, and I'm trying to cast, but I have too much line and like the cast is all stupid and sloppy. I'll just cut the jig off. I'll shorten it. Um, so I can, um, basically not be casting through the, um, eyes of the, the rod itself. So there are a couple lines or a couple knots that you could use. A lot of times I just use the, uh, my two go-to knots are the Albright and the uni to uni. A lot of times I'll just use the uni to uni. Cause like I said, I'm not casting through the guides. So it's not a big deal. It's a knot. It's easy for me to tie. Uh, it's extremely strong. It's been a good knot. The downside is it's very clunky. It's thick. Uh, it's chunky and you're not, you don't want to go through the guides with that. So it's a very poor knot. If you're doing a top shot or anything like that, where you're constantly going in and out of the guides, it's not the way to do it. Uh, my second best is probably 
the Albright. The Albright is super slim, super strong. I love the Albright knot. The thing with the Albright though is that it's it's actually very kind of there's there's many steps to it to get it right. And I think a lot of people tie it wrong and they they fail. But you've got to like tighten the you gotta make sure the line goes to the eye right. You've got to tighten the line end and then the tag end and the line end. It's it's very I have it down, you know, pat, but you've got to like really practice that one. And there's little details of the alt right. But once you have it down and have it good, it's pretty much almost unbreakable. Now that that's a good knot to tie when you're going in and out of guides and stuff like that. It's very smooth, it's very small. Um, but then honestly, the best knot you can tie and Sammy knows is the FG knot. The FG knot is proven. Um, it's the best leader to uh braid line that you can make. It's um it's bulletproof. It's the strongest. It it just is the strongest. It's the strongest. It's low profile. You can send it through guides. Uh, and it really is the best. The downside with the FG knot, you got to practice it a lot. Extremely hard. I've never tied an FG knot in my life. <laughs> I'm just being 100 percent honest with you guys. I've seen tutorials on it. Um it looks too complicated. I know it's I could learn it and practice it, but it's like that's not a knot I want to tie on my kayak. That's not a knot I want to tie offshore on my boat when I'm getting bounced around. My Uni Uni and Albright, they never fail me ever. I've never had an issue with it, so I stick with them. But you can't argue with the FG knot. FG knot, if you can tie it and learn how to tie it, it is the best. I've, I've seen, um, again, I've watched so many tests on the different knots, leader knots. Um, FG knot is, is by far. There's so many benefits to the FG knot. So if you guys look that one up, you know, there's the blood knot as well. You know, a lot of people use, um, but that's probably uni to uni, Albright blood knot and FG knot are probably the four that you want to tie. And again, that all depends on how much leader you want to do. If you cast through the eyes, I would definitely do an Albright or an FG knot. If you're not going to cast through the eyes, I think uni knot, you know, blood knot are probably just fine on that end. <laughs> Sammy, no. Sammy, do you tie the FG knot? Like, are you good enough to tie that? Like when you're out in your kayak and stuff like that, like in a hurry? Because I could tie the other. That's one of the reasons I stick to uni to uni. It's something I can just, I can bust out quick, real quick. And it's been very good. I mean, I've caught tuna, plenty of tuna, like 100 pounders on uni to uni knots and not had an issue with it. But the FG is just like, I think with anything, if you get good with it, I understand where you can hang with it. But that's something you can, yeah, you tie it on your kayak. It's definitely not you got to practice for sure. But I think if you get it down, that that is the knot to tie for sure. Oscar said he always uses the FG knot too. Yeah. You guys aren't wrong. You're not wrong at all. I just, maybe I should, uh, I'll have to practice it and then tie it. I've just, I've, I've seen it. It knots are one of those things where it's like, I know it works and my knots don't fail. So I'm like, why, why, why learn another knot? You know what I mean? And then let's see the last kind of thing. So we had monofilament, we had carbon, and then we've talked about how you can go, you know, straight to uh, braid. If that's your thing too, you're just going to lose abrasion resistance, but braid and then braid knots are different too, because some knots hold really well in braid. Like when you're going braid to like a hook or a jig and some knots really, really suck. So not all knots are the same knots that hold really well in mono and fluorocarbon do not hold the same with, um, braid so that's something you got to think about too and you really got to realize um which ones uh work or not if you're going to go straight braid benji moreto with a ten dollar super sticker Oos, thank you benji so much for the donation man you're the man keeping the lights on here at the submission fishing headquarters captain adobo Oos made it to life finally what's going on captain adobo you guys don't know captain adobo he was one of the he was one of the OG jigging guys. When I was getting into micro jigging for spotties, he was one of the only one of the few people that had heard of that before or knew what I was talking about. He even owned like some of the jigs. So he was like, um Captain Adobe was an OG man. That guy knows how to fish. And he's he's been around. His logbook too is insane. Double uni Alberto, good, but more complicated. Yeah, the Alberto is real similar. It's like the Albright, right? It's 
Sammy says three to four minutes, about an inch long. Dude, that's a long time. That's a long time to tie a knot, man. Three to four minutes. Like when you really, if you sat down and like for four minutes just in your kayak, not fishing, especially if like the bite's hot, that's that's a long time. And that's probably fast. Like that's probably a fast FG knot too. Oscar said that I could probably do it on the yak, but I get too impatient. Yeah, see, but that's what you're saying. You, so you tie them at home, but then when you get on the kayak, it's really probably really hard to tie them. I mean, I don't want none of that that smoke. Jeremy Albright, yeah. Albright was my go-to for a long time, and then I was like, I just defaulted. I just started going back to the Uni Uni. I do like the Albright, though. If I've, if I've got time, I'll do the Albright, you know, for, like, moving spots, or I know I got some time for sure, but but I'm in the hurry. I burn it out. Cape Dog, oos. How was going on, man? Good to see you at the PCS a couple months ago. Member for 21 months. Thank you, Cal, for becoming a member. If you guys aren't members, consider becoming a member. That helps out the show. You get benefits too, perks. You get codes for free, free shipping and stuff like that on products. I really appreciate that. You get custom emotes, you know, and all that good stuff. And uh, lastly, I wanted to say on the leader lines is basically just comes down to confidence, guys. Um, and we talk about this a lot whenever you're fishing your confidence is key people talk about confidence baits uh, and just stuff they do and that's really everything you know your mind me and my wife were talking about like the power of the mind and suggestion how when you wills believe in something and will it you know sometimes it can come true um you know just having like a positive mindset well that's really the same thing with fishing and we call it confidence there's certain colors uh, certain knots same thing with the line like if you that's ultimately like what it boils down to if you're confident when you're fishing fluorocarbon or you're confident when you're fishing monofilament um that's what you want to stick with because that's i don't know why that is but it's right just fishing the line the same way but there's something about being confident when you're fishing that you're going to catch something really does make a difference like when you're like i'm going to put this on and i'm going to get bit you know it happens with colors and sizes and everything there's confidence is is not to be underrated so if you found you hear people talk about confidence baits all the time, it's a bait they're confident is going to get bit and they're confident fishing. And same thing with the line. So if you're very confident with fluorocarbon, you just fish the fluorocarbon. If you're confident with mono, fish the mono. You know, if you've had success with one and you know you can get bit with it, uh, this really all boils down to and fishing styles as well. You know, same thing with knots. Everybody is very dogmatic about the knots that they tie. Everybody wants to know what knot they tie and they talk about it and everybody wants to haggle and Talk about how who's not superior. The best knot is the knot that you can tie the best, you can tie quickly, and it's going to hold. And many knots do that. Um, San Diego Jam Knot, the Uni Knot, this classic cinch knot. There's millions of knots. The trailing knot. Fish the tie the one that you can tie really well that you've had success with. Learn it a million times, and continue to tie it. And Bruce Lee said he doesn't fear the man that knows ten thousand kicks. He says he fears the man that knows one kick and done it 10,000 times. And that's, there's something to that. Same thing with like tying knots. Find a knot you can tie 10,000 times, get extremely good at it, and just use that knot. If it doesn't fail you, there's no reason to go searching for other knots. Now, if you're losing fish and they're breaking, you need to change it up. But just stick with it. Same thing with, with, the, with the line, guys. Stick with what you know. But if you're fishing one or the other and you're not having success with it, maybe change it. If you're slow pitch jigging uh, with fluorocarbon around docks and pilings and you're losing a lot of fish, try monofilament. If you're fishing mono and you feel like you're just not getting any bites, try fluorocarbon. Maybe it's maybe it's a visual thing. Maybe you're going to get bit on fluoro and you know stick with it. So, you know, that's kind of my take on leaders. And hopefully you guys learned something. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. But um, yeah, hopefully that this uh, cleared some things up with what to use, when to use it, uh, benefits, pros and cons of each one. Ran, what do you think about the FG chain knot for a hundred pound top shot mono, a two hundred pound leader with the swivel for nighttime bluefin? Yeah, dude, hundred percent. I actually did a show. I have a live show on here. Uh, I think it was like probably a year and a half ago. I actually did the eight the uh, chain knot on um, on live here. So I have a whole show dedicated to it. I showed everybody how to do it. I love the chain knot. I use that a lot all the time. I've caught hundred plus pound tuna on it. Uh, definitely works. 
uh, no problem. The FG chain knot is really good because it it stretches and you get it. It's it's basically like a, a shock absorber that you're you're putting on your line. I've actually tied it for spotties. I've showed a lot of you guys. I've tied it for like 15 pound line and did a chain knot on it uh, just to kind of be funny, but it works. I can tie that knot extremely fast too, but that's another kind of labor intensive knot. It's really easy to tie, but it does take some time. But uh, I tied the chain knot at um, CCA, one of the events where they do that thing. You like donate a dollar and then they put it on the machine. Uh, Kevin Nakata was with me and he did a knot. And I was like, dude, I got this knot that'll last. So I tied the chain knot. It was like 40 pound test. And this thing broke well over a hundred percent. It was like 106%. Uh, it went over 40 pounds and the knot didn't break. Chain knot is legit, dude. For those of you guys that don't know, basically look it up. Uh, chain knot's awesome. Not really necessary for small fish. Uh, you can tie it. Sometimes I like to tie it like before I go out just because I got the time. But um, yeah, really good for big fish. Yeah, chain knot's legit, man. Chain knot is legit. Best knot is the one you can tie at night when the bite is hot. Yeah, it's true. Best knot is just a knot. Knot you could tie well, man. That's that's really all it is to it. Everybody's like, the Palomar knot. I only tie those San Diego sham knots. Like, whatever. <laughs> You know, it, like if somebody notices you're tying a different knot than them, it's like everybody wants to evangelize like how much their knot's better. It's like, who cares? As long as you're not losing fish, it doesn't matter. There's a million good knots out there. Don't let people bully you into thinking you have to tie a certain knot. I tie the, the uni knot most of the time. That's like the most old school, probably boomer knot there is. But you know what? I could tie, tie it well. I could tie it extremely fast. Works for everything. Me and Kevin got into that. We were out there fishing and he was like heckling my, my uni knots. And I was like, dude, I've snagged on the bottom and he knows this for a fact. He, we could not break my lines like 15, 20 pound test, like 30 pound test. Forget about it. We had to back the boat up, tie it up on the cleat and then move the boat just to like break the line out of the wreck. <laughs> like those knots did not fail. Well, the chain knot will be connected with a leader uh, and hook. Just hook the jig. Yeah, chain knot to the... Um, will the chain knot be connected with the leader and the hook or just to the jig? The best way to do it is chain knot to a solid stainless steel ring. Uh, I don't have any here, but just get... You can buy a pack of stainless steel rings. They're just solid rings. Chain knot to the ring and just leave the ring on your rig. Now, whenever you're changing jigs, just change the drink, the jig with the split ring onto the solid ring. So leave the solid ring on your rod and just leave it there. You can even like tie it up, reel it up and put it in the eye and it just sits there. Whatever jig you want to put on, just take split ring pliers and put it on with the split ring. And that's how you want to do it. So basically it'll be split ring to the solid ring. And now with that, you've taken the jig out of the equation as well. So you're not fighting with the fish with the jig, you know, jigs bend, um, depending on what kind of jig you have, you can have failure, you know, in the wire and stuff like that. Submission jig, you're not going to have that problem, but I've seen other jigs, you know, have issues where they're not through wire and they pull out and stuff like that. But that way you're just fighting the solid ring onto the split ring onto the hook. Guarantee you're going to catch that fish. RP knot has never failed me. Yeah, that's a good one too. What's the one? The trilene knot that like Berkeley came out with. That one's actually like really strong. Some people say I tie this knot or that knot. And you look down at their shoes and they're untied. <laughs> yeah, bad. I remember I went fishing with my uncle one time and he was like, dude was like so disappointed. Like, I didn't tie a Palomar knot. I don't even know how to tie a Palomar knot. Like I, didn't even, I haven't even bothered. Like I honestly like learned to tie some knots. If you asked me to tie, I couldn't even tie them anymore. Cause I don't even know. I just tie, tie two knots my entire life. When I'm going on to a jig or a leader, I mean, not a jig, like yeah, either a jig or a split ring or something. It's either chain knot or uni knot. That's it. If I'm going to my leader to braid, all right, you need a uni. That's it. It's the only knots that I ever tie. I know the Palomar is really popular, though. And the uh, San Diego Jam knot, I think, is really, really popular one, too.
they work. It's fine. All right, guys. Hopefully you learned something. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Been a great audience tonight. Thank you for the uh, donation, Benji, and for uh, Cave Dog and Leonard for resubbing their memberships. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you have any questions for topics or anything like that, you guys want to um, recommend, just hit me up on Instagram, you know, or on here. SoCal Fishing Squad says Palomar. So you go Palomar to the braid. So you're just the straight braid to Palomar knot or braid to Palomar knot. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. I like that everybody fishes different stuff too. It's so cool. It's like, uh, I know I said I was going to leave, but like the, the knots are like, um, fishing is, that's where it's like the parallels with jujitsu, right? When you, there's so many different styles to do it and we're all, it's the same game. When you do Brazilian jujitsu, um, all these guys have different styles. I have my different style when I roll and when I fight, it's like everybody has flashy styles, really, um, tons of dexterity other guys have strength and power some guys have really basic games but it's just like that's what makes it cool and fishing has that same parallel you know it's like everybody has different styles whether they whatever the line they're using whatever knots they use it's just like it's so cool seeing the different styles that people use with the same results right in jujitsu it's like you can have a different style and still be extremely successful and fishing is the same way you can have your own character your own style um, your own personality into the fishing world and still be really successful fishermen with your own style. And that's, I think that's really cool about fishing. It's awesome. All right, Nick. Yeah, dude, hopefully I'll get you some blanks and we'll get some custom uh, submission jigs painted up, put them for sale. That'd be awesome, dude. These guys would love it. You guys don't know Nick, check him out. SoCal fishing squad. He makes uh he custom paint swim baits and uh, puts on, you know, I don't know what you call that. The, the flash, the skirts, he puts on the custom skirts, paints them, does the eyes. Uh, they're really awesome. So check his stuff out. It's good stuff. Richie rich. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Proof clinch, not on swivel or hook directly when it's a pain to i can't get the palomar not on heck yeah uni uni boofling fishing unorthodox yeah do you got that unorthodox style you're that guy that plays like the inverted guard with like the barambolo rolls and you're like what the hell is this guy doing and then you roll with him and it works and you're like oh my god i didn't think this stuff would work <laughs> all right guys Thanks again. If you want a, your own submission jigs, you can get them at submissionfishing.com. Get them at your local tackle stores. We just restocked the ton of tackle stores, guys. We sent out a, a ton of micro jigs. So if you didn't get any in this first wave, we still got a lot of the, um, or not a lot, but we still got some um, assassins, some 15 grams and 10s, the mercenaries. Sorry, not the assassin. Mercenary jig. We don't sell an assassin. Uh, 15 gram sumos are already gone, but we did send a ton of jigs to local tackle stores. So, and a lot of them bought this micro stuff. So if you guys need refills, uh, go hit up your tackle stores, uh, get them from them. You guys go to fishing reps. You can find the dealer locator. Uh, they got your stuff. If you can't find it there, uh, submissionfishing.com. Again, check out Submission at Sea if you guys want to fish with me. Uh, definitely check that out and uh, go on that two-day trip. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate y'all. And we'll see you next week. Oops.